Vision 3. The Universe and Its Symbolism. After this I saw a vast instrument, round and shadowed, in the shape of an egg, small at the top, large in the middle and narrowed at the bottom, outside it, surrounding its circumference, there was bright fire with, as it were, a shadowy zone under it. And in that fire there was a globe of sparkling flame so great that the whole instrument was illuminated by it, over which three little torches were arranged in such a way that by their fire they held up the globe lest it fall. And that globe at times raised itself up, so that much fire flew to it and thereby its flames lasted longer, and sometimes sank downward and great cold came to it, so that its flames were more quickly subdued. But from the fire that surrounded the instrument issued a blast with whirlwinds, and from the zone beneath it rushed forth another blast with its own whirlwinds, which diffused themselves hither and thither throughout the instrument. In that zone, too, there was a dark fire of such great horror that I could not look at it, whose force shook the whole zone, full of thunder, tempest and exceedingly sharp stones both large and small. And while it made its thunders heard, the bright fire and the winds and the air were in commotion, so that lightning preceded those thunders, for the fire felt within itself the turbulence of the thunder. But beneath that zone was purest ether, with no zone beneath it, and in it I saw a globe of white fire in great magnitude over which two little torches were placed, holding that globe so that it would not exceed the measure of its course. And in that ether were scattered many bright spheres, into which the white globe from time to time poured itself out and emitted its brightness, and then moved back under the globe of red fire and renewed its flames from it, and then again sent them out into those spheres. And from that ether too a blast came forth with its whirlwinds, which spread itself everywhere throughout the instrument. And beneath that ether I saw watery air with a white zone beneath it, which diffused itself here and there and imparted moisture to the whole instrument. And when it suddenly contracted it sent forth sudden rain with great noise, and when it gently spread out it gave a pleasant and softly falling rain. But from it too came a blast with its whirlwinds, which spread itself throughout the aforementioned instrument. And in the midst of these elements was a sandy globe of great magnitude, which these elements had so surrounded that it could not waver in any direction. But as these elements and these blasts contended with each other, by their strength they made it move a little. And I saw between the north and the east a great mountain, which to the north had great darkness and to the east had great light, but in such a way that the light could not reach the darkness, nor the darkness the light. And again I heard the voice from heaven, saying to me, One the visible and temporal is a manifestation of the invisible and eternal. God, who made all things by his will, created them so that his name would be known and glorified, showing in them not just the things that are visible and temporal, but also the things that are invisible and eternal. Which is demonstrated by this vision you are perceiving. To the firmament in the likeness of an egg and what it signifies. For this vast instrument, round and shadowy, in the shape of an egg, small at the top, large in the middle and narrowed at the bottom, faithfully shows omnipotent God, incomprehensible in his majesty and inestimable in his mysteries and the hope of all the faithful, for humanity at first was rude and rough and simple in its actions, but later was enlarged through the Old and New Testaments, and finally at the end of the world is destined to be beset with many tribulations. 3. On the bright fire and the shadowy zone. Outside it, surrounding its circumference, there is bright fire with, as it were, a shadowy zone under it. This shows that God consumes by the fire of his vengeance all those who are outside the true faith, and those who remain within the Catholic faith he purifies by the fire of his consolation, thus he throws down the darkness of devilish perversity, as he did also when the devil wanted to oppose himself to God though God had created him, and so fell defeated into perdition. For on the placement of the sun and the three stars, and in that fire there is a globe of sparkling flame, so great that the whole instrument is illuminated by it, which in the splendor of its brightness shows that within God the Father is his ineffable only begotten, the Son of Justice with the brilliance of burning charity, of such great glory that every creature is illumined by the brightness of his light, over which three little torches are arranged in such a way that by their fire they hold up the globe lest it fall, that is, the Trinity, shows how by its arrangement the Son of God, leaving the angels in the heavenly places, descended to earth and showed humans, who exist in soul and body, heavenly things, so that, glorifying him by serving him, they reject all harmful error, and magnify him as the true Son of God incarnate through the true Virgin, when the angel foretold him and when humans, 
living in soul and body, with faithful joy received him. 5. On the ascent of the sun and what it signifies. Therefore the globe sometimes raises itself up, so that much fire flies to it and therefore its flames last longer. This means that when the time came that the only begotten of God was to become incarnate for the redemption and uplifting of the human race by the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit by the power of the Father brought celestial mysteries wonderfully to pass in the Blessed Virgin, so that when the Son of God too in virginal chastity showed marvelous splendor and made virginity fruitful, virginity became glorious. For the long for incarnation was brought to pass in the Noble Virgin. 6. On the Descent of the Sun and What It Signifies so, indeed, sometimes it sinks downwards and great cold comes to it, so that its flames are more quickly subdued. This shows that the only begotten of God, born of a virgin and hence inclined to be merciful to human poverty, incurred many miseries and sustained great physical anguish, but after he had shown himself to the world in a bodily shape, he passed from the world and returned to the Father, while his disciples stood by, as it is written, seven words from the Acts of the Apostles. While they looked on he was lifted up, and a cloud received him, Acts 1 verse 19. Which is to say, when the children of the church had received the Son of God in the interior knowledge of their hearts, the sanctity of his body was lifted up into the power of his divinity, and in a mystical miracle the cloud of secret mystery received him, hiding him from mortal eyes, and the blasts of the winds showed themselves his servants. 8 On the first wind and its whirlwinds. But, as you see, from the fire that surrounds the instrument issues a blast with whirlwinds, which shows that from Almighty God, who fills the whole world with his power, truth rushes forth and spreads with words of justice, which truly demonstrate to humanity the same living and true God. 9. On the second wind and its whirlwinds. But from the zone beneath it rushes forth another blast with its own whirlwinds because the rage of the devil, knowing God and fearing him, sends out the worst dishonor and the most evil utterances, which diffuse themselves hither and thither throughout the instrument, since in the world useful and useless rumors spread themselves abroad in many ways among the peoples. 10. On the dark fire and the thunder and the sharp stones. In this zone also there is a dark fire of such horror that you cannot look at it. This means that the ancient betrayers most evil and most vile snares vomit forth blackest murder with such great passion that the human intellect cannot fathom its insanity, whose force shakes the whole zone, because murder includes in its horror all diabolical malignities. In the first man born hatred boiled up out of anger and led to fratricide, full of thunder, tempest and exceedingly sharp stones large and small, for murder is full of avarice, and drunkenness and extreme hardness of heart, which run riot relentlessly both in great murders and in minor vices. While it makes its thunders heard, the bright fire and the winds and the air are all in commotion, because when murder cries out in its eagerness to shed blood, it arouses the justice of heaven and an outburst of flying rumors and an increased disposition to vengeance on the part of right judgment, so that lightning precedes those thunders, for the fire feels in itself the turbulence of the thunder, for the manifestation of divine scrutiny exceeds and suppresses evil, since the divine majesty, before the sound of that insanity manifests itself in public, foresees it with that watchful eye to which all things are naked. 11. The purest ether and the placement of the moon and two stars. But beneath that zone is purest ether, with no zone beneath it, for beneath the snares of the ancient betrayer shines most serene faith, with no uncertainty or infidelity hiding in it, since it is not founded by itself but dependent on Christ, and in it you see a globe of white fire and great magnitude, which is a true symbol of the unconquered church, which, as you can see, asserts in faith innocent brightness and great honor, over which two little torches are placed, holding that globe so that it does not exceed the measure of its course which signifies that the two testaments given from heaven, the old and the new, connected to the divine rules of the celestial mysteries, holding the church back from rushing into a variety of different practices, for both the old and the new testaments show it the blessedness of the supernal heritage. 12. The placement of the other stars and what it signifies. And therefore at that ether are scattered many bright spheres, into which the white globe from time to time pours itself out and emits its brightness, for in the purity of faith many splendid works of piety are done by which the church, though it may suffer words of disdain, passes on the beauty of its miracles. Though plunged in sorrow, it still marvels at the brightness of the works done by the perfected through others, and therefore, it moves back under the globe of red fire and renews its flames from it, and then again sends them out into those spheres, 
for moving in contrition back under the protection of the only begotten of God, and receiving from him the pardon of divine consolation. It again shows the love of heavenly things in blessed works. 13. The third wind and its whirlwinds and what they signify. Therefore also from the ether a blast comes forth with its whirlwinds, which spreads itself everywhere throughout the instrument. For from the unity of faith there comes forth to help humanity a strong tradition of true and perfect statements, which swiftly penetrate to the ends of the earth. 14 The watery air and the white zone and what they signify. And beneath that ether you see watery air with a white zone beneath it, which diffuses itself here and there and imparts moisture to the whole instrument. For thus, under the faith possessed by the ancient and the modern fathers, baptism in the church for the salvation of believers is truly shown to you, which, founded on blessed innocence and stability, propagates itself everywhere by divine inspiration and brings to the whole world the overflowing waters of salvation for believers. When this zone suddenly contracts, it sends forth sudden rain with great noise, and when it gently spreads out it gives a pleasant and softly falling rain, for sometimes baptism is presented by the apostles of truth with all their enthusiasm of preaching and depth of mind, and so manifests itself to the astonishment of humans with a rapid abundance of words and a flood of preaching, and sometimes that same baptism is presented by those preachers with sweet moderation, so that it reaches the people for whom it is meant discreetly by a gentle watering. 15 On the fourth wind and its whirlwinds. Therefore from that air too comes a blast with its whirlwinds that spreads itself throughout the aforementioned instrument, for when the flood of baptism brings salvation to believers, a true report of the words of forcible sermons goes forth and pervades the whole world with its manifest blessedness, so that the people, forsaking infidelity and seeking after the Catholic faith, openly declare it. 16 On the sandy globe of the earth and what it signifies. And in the midst of these elements is a sandy globe of great magnitude, which these elements have so surrounded that it cannot waver in any direction. This openly shows that, of all the strengths of God's creation, man's is most profound, made in a wondrous way with great glory from the dust of the earth and so entangled with the strengths of the rest of creation that he can never be separated from them, for the elements of the world, created for man's service, wait on him, and man, enthroned as it were in their midst, by divine disposition presides over them. As David says, inspired by me, 17 Words of David on this subject. Thou hast crowned him with glory and worship, and given him due minion over all the works of thy hands, Psalms 8 verses 6 to 7. Which is to say, you, O God, who have marvelously made all things, have crowned man with the gold and purple crown of intellect and with the sublime garment of visible beauty, thus placing him like a prince above the height of your perfect works, which you have distributed justly and rightly among your creatures. Before all your other creatures you have conferred on man great and wonderful dignities. 18 On the movement of the earth and what it signifies. But, as you see, as these elements and these blasts contend with each other, by their strength they make the globe move a little, for at certain times the report of the Creator's miracles comes to all of God's creation, so that miracle is piled on miracle in a great thunder of words, and then man, struck by the greatness of these miracles, feels the impact on his mind and body and in these wondrous deeds considers with astonishment his own weakness and frailty. 19 The great mountain between the north and the east. And you see between the north and the east a great mountain, which to the north has great darkness and to the east has great light. This shows man's great choice between devilish impiety and divine goodness, evil deception giving the many miseries of damnation to the reprobate, and salvation giving the great happiness of redemption to the elect, but in such a way that the light cannot reach the darkness nor the darkness the light, for the works of light do not come down among the works of darkness, and the works of darkness do not ascend to the works of light, though the devil often tries to obscure the latter, through evil people, like pagans, heretics, and false prophets, and those whom they try to attract to themselves by fallacious deception. How? Because they want to know what it is not for them to know, imitating the one who panted to be like the Most High. And because they follow him, by their own will he shows them a lie as the truth. Hence they are not with me, and I am not with them, for they do not walk in my ways, but love strange paths, seeking out the false things a foolish creature shows them about future events. And in their perverse seeking this is what they wish to have, despising me and rejecting my saints, who love me with a sincere heart. 20 Those who perversely examine the future by means of creatures. But these people who obstinately tempt me by perverse art, 
examining creatures that were made for their service and asking them to show them things their willfulness wishes to know. Can they, by practicing this art, lengthen or shorten the time their creator has given them to live? They cannot, by a day or by an hour. Or can they postpone what God has predetermined? In no way, O oh, wretches! Do I not sometimes permit creatures to show you what will happen? They can show you these signs because they fear me, God, as a servant can sometimes display the power of his master, and as the ox, the ass and other animals show the will of their masters when they faithfully do their bidding. O oh, fools! When you consign me to forgetfulness, neither looking to me nor adoring me, but looking to a creature subject to you for what it portends and shows, then you are obstinately casting me aside, worshipping the frail creature instead of your creator. Therefore I say to you, O oh, human, why do you worship that creature, which cannot console you or help you and which cannot make you prosper in happiness, though it is affirmed that they can by astrologers, teachers of death and followers of pagan unbelief, who say the stars give life to you humans and determine all your actions. O oh, wretches, who made the stars? But at times, with my permission, the stars by certain signs do manifest themselves to humanity, as my son shows in his gospel, where he says. 21 words of the gospel. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, Luke 21 verse 35. Which is to say, by the light of these light service is rendered to humanity, and in their revolutions the times of times are displayed. So in the latest times, by my permission lamentable and dangerous epochs will be foretold in them, so that the radiance of the sun and the splendor of the moon and the brightness of the stars will be dimmed, that human hearts may be stirred up to action. Thus also by my will the incarnation of my son was shown by a star. But no human being has a star of his own, which determines his life, as a foolish and erring people tries to assert, all stars are at the service of all people. That star only shone more brightly than all other stars because my only begotten, unlike all other humans, was born without sin from a virgin birth. But that star gave my son no aid, except in faithfully announcing his incarnation to the people, for all stars and other creatures, fearing me, fulfill my command, but do not have any knowledge of anything about any creature. For creatures fulfill my commands when it pleases me, in the same way as when a minter, making a coin, strikes it with the requisite form, then that coin displays the form stamped on it, but has no power to know when the minter may decide to impress another form on it, for neither in the long nor in the short run does it understand the form it has. What does this mean? O oh, human, if a stone lay before you on which, if you looked carefully, you could read what was going to happen to you, then in your mistaken thoughts, saddened by your misfortune or elated by your prosperity, you would say, alas, I shall die, or, O oh joy, I shall live, or, alas, what misfortune, or, O oh joy, what prosperity is mine. Now what would that stone have conferred on you? Would it have taken away or given you anything? It could not be either against you or for you. And likewise neither stars nor fire or birds nor any other creatures of this kind can either harm you or help you by your examining them. But if, rejecting me, you trust in a creature made for your service, I also in my just judgment will cast you out of my sight, taking from you the felicity of my kingdom. For I do not want you to scrutinize stars or fire or birds or other creatures for signs of future events, and if you persist in scrutinizing them, your eyes are obnoxious to me, and I will cast you out like the lost angel, who deserted the truth and threw himself into damnation. O oh, human! When the stars and the other creatures were made, where were you? Did you give God advice about their arrangement? But the presumption of such scrutiny arose in the first of all dissensions, when man forgot God to such an extent that he arrogantly inspected one kind of creature after another and sought in them signs of future events. 